Welcome to Canberra. Metalheads. Season 1. The Archives. Alright, let's keep it. got Mikey Malpas and Benny Benfagor. We're joined in the studio today with the boys from Memoriam. We got Jared, Dutch and Dan. How you doing boys? Good. Going real well. Yeah, it's good good to hear. You guys um enjoy the uh the nice weather that we had coming in. Yeah. I love the I love brisk winters. Yep. <laughs> it's a perfect time of year especially to listen to some nice Canberra metal. Mhm. Mm. You guys are in multiple other uh, metal bands, but it's good to have such a dynamic group in here today. So uh, let's see if we can um, hear a little bit more about the guys behind the instruments and mics. Sweet. Everybody out there, stick around. We've got a cool interview with the guys from Memoriam. We'll kick it off with our first question. Alrighty, guys. So how did you guys meet? That's the question that it's on everyone's mind. I guess uh, Jared and I first got together back in... 2007 ish when i was in temple Stowe at the point and uh we kind of just bounced off the idea that we wanted to play something and see where it went and then that's pretty much how we started amorium was mainly jared and i just jamming trying to figure out what we liked what we listened to that's what we bonded over mainly and um yeah then we just started recruiting members from there so i think our first show was 2009 March 2009 the first show was yeah there you right. go yeah I think it was the 13th something like that around then yeah not sure something which like was that. a wednesday yeah, by the way so it was. <laughs> oh yeah cool yeah yeah so that was that was an interesting show yeah <laughs> <laughs> Had you, um, so that was pre-Tortured, wasn't it? Dutch? Yeah, that was um, before I joined Tortured. So I was in Templestowe at the time and uh, I left there um, and wanted to start something on my own. Yep. So Jared and I started that up. Um, we had a few band members there, played a few shows, which actually I played a show where it was a Morium opened then tortured and then deprivation that was the first show <laughs> that, that, that yeah, was the yeah. first show I don't think it was the first one it was, it was 100% was I've got the flyer right on. I've got the flyer yeah, too right. <laughs> but yeah then I got asked to, then I got asked to join tortured and then a few years later I got asked to join deprivation so that's where I'm at at the moment awesome yeah no like I said it's such a great dynamic of like musicians today especially mm. bands that I've seen like Deprivation and we've like tortured pretty lengthy careers as well. I mean, when you start pushing 10 years in the Canberra metal scene, you start to become fairly well known and yeah, I think fairly you're sought well after. I think I've been playing since live since I was 19. So that's, yeah, a good 12 years now <laughs> yeah, coming yeah. up to. It definitely shows in the drumming, man. The amount of times I'll hear a track and I'll be like, dude, who did the drums? They're like... Uh, before you say it was a Dutch, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we he, he came in to do oh, that that's album. Right. Yeah, anyway, <laughs> recorded the Claret Ash album. Yeah, <laughs> I've done some other work with High View as well. Yep, another Canberra band. Um, just filling in for a few shows here and there. Yeah, yeah, cool. I that's think right. one of the best things about Amorium, at least before even I joined the band, was the diversity of different music styles and musical backgrounds yep. that came together. Like Jared comes from primarily a black metal background yep. and at least that's where at least I saw his music taste sitting and you know he's got that groove side to him as well yeah, though yeah. which he never ceases to amaze me with every now and then <laughs> pulls out a riff out of nowhere and I'm just like dude that's right. that's where really was that to you're welcome man <laughs> yeah. no it's good man I, it's, I've seen uh, Jared in multiple I didn't realise until I put it all together I'm like I've seen a lot of bands with Jared in it I've seen a lot of bands with all you guys in it I think <laughs> If we mapped it all out, I think that Amorim would probably have the most diverse list of like previous. <laughs> Pretty band much, members. man, and as well too. Like even though all these other projects have been going on, and all these other bands, Amorim still stayed true and strong in the background. Yeah, yeah. Makes you guys yeah. So great. That the fact you got such like a diverse like team. Yeah. Yeah, well, it, and that's it too. Like again, back to the like the diverse musical backgrounds. Like all of those elements come into the music and yeah. shine through in the music as well. We're not just like a straight thrash band. We're not just like a straight, you know, melodic death band. We yeah, try and yeah. put bits of everything and, you know, please all sorts of different musical tastes, yeah. which makes writing a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. Our, our musical backgrounds are very different from one person to another, you yeah. know, especially with um, we've had two bass players and three vocalists in total. Yep. Um, we were one guitarist for a long time until Dan joined. 
um, which we were very grateful to have Dan come on board. He added such an amazing element when that came in. A bit more depth, I can feel from. from yeah, the- a lot more depth. The creativity and writing and possibilities just kind of opened up really well when um, we had Dan come in. So that just made our lives a lot more uh, easier coming with the writing of the new album as well. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. At that point in time when Dan joined. Um, Morium was my first band too, which was pretty cool for me. I had a lot of songs that I just mucked around with at home and stuff and was able to bring them to the table. Yep. And the guys were open to those ideas and stuff. But I actually learnt so much with the guys as well. Yeah, yeah. You know, different playing styles and stuff, you know. Yeah, I think good. the first days jamming in your little, you know, two by two shed yeah. in the backyard, I think Garden <laughs> of Dust was born, which yeah. is still to this day like my favourite song. I think yeah. just from learning like different, you know, ways to play things with you was just like we could do this and then out came some cool music so mm. yeah that's yeah. it so it's like it's funny we get we get you in for Morium primarily but we're also touching on like a bunch of other like history from Canberra Metal as yeah. well yeah especially if you look at the roots. last in the last you know 10 15 years you know we've we've all been around doing different things and you know um like I grew up with the the Temple Stowe boys so that's where you know that was my first band and like learning how to do all the drums and all that stuff back then but then evolving and having a morium as like that staple for all of us you know jared's been in a morium from the um, get-go with me and he's you know done claret ash um and he's done a couple of cover band things where he's i remember <laughs> early tranquil deception days and um i think it's just because you're hanging out with aaron so much i'm like yeah. that dude has to be in that band <laughs> No, but no, um, I didn't play with Tranquil. But like that that was one of my first gigs at like at the basement was seeing Tranquil Deception in the early days and that's when it kind of flowed on from there. I remember um hearing first about Amorium kind of in that time when you hadn't done a lot of gigs during that um sort of twenty twelve kind of period. Yeah. And um we we're a bit quiet around there. That was yeah. about the time when we started Claret. Yeah, yeah. And when James moved to Canberra. And- yep. Yeah, so kind of off. there was there was a bit of a, a, a gap there um, for a couple of years because my commitments with um, Tortured took over pretty hard. So Morium went a bit on, on like a little bit of a hiatus yeah. after the EP. Yep. Um, we had our bass player leave and our singer leave shortly before that, and then we got new guys in. So there was just this little bit of a rough patch that yep. we went through. Um, but then, yeah, when around that time. We all had other commitments going. Jared had just, you know, started Claret Ash with James and was having a fun time there. He went and played Japan. Yeah, yeah. We've had um, the guys from Claret. We had now uh, James and Nick, and we've heard some of the Japanese stories, man. Yeah, yeah good times. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Still, good times. the yeah, favourite one is that one: finding the Francis Kana beard, oh, dude. Yeah. That, that's. He's got a photo of him hugging the giant Francis Kana schooner b- glass. It's, yeah, yeah. it's an iconic photo. Like, <laughs> if ever, that's probably going to go on his headstone when he dies. <laughs> yeah. This is so Jared do a tea. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Finally find a German pub. It's a pretty epic moment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> Bottle exactly. those tears for later. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. No, it's got some pretty cool stories. I mean, you guys have travelled around and done some gigs, and I'm sure we'll get into that um, a little more later. Mm-hmm. Um, so we've got we've gone through like a history of Amorium and how long you guys been doing gigs for and things like that. What's it been like playing playing the gigs over the years, and what's the history been like with um, other bands and things like that? Oh, uh, well, in terms of doing the gigs, I mean, like I guess every band starting out, you, you travel and you play some gigs to you know absolutely no one. Yeah, yeah. Um, done our fair share of those as I'm sure most bands have um, we've been interstate I think our third show or something was interstate so it's always we've always kind of moved been a travelling band yeah um, we've played with heaps of cool bands yeah. as well I, I guess that helps with the dynamic of the band um, because you've got a fairly, a fairly versatile versatile sound um, you can fit with multiple bands and fit a bill. Um, I mean, I could see you guys with black metal, death metal, like some some core bands yeah, as well. That's absolutely right, man. And it's again one of those things that because we have we touch on so many different sort of genres, we don't really fit into a specific sound. We like we're definitely not like a hardcore black metal band, and we're definitely not like a sort of pop metal band necessarily. Yeah, yeah. But the styles in there, sort of, you could put us on any bill and it wouldn't be too far away from yeah, yeah. the sort of overall theme of the night or whatever. That's a good thing, though. 
Like yeah. that means that like when it comes to gigs and stuff, like you were just saying, it's a lot easier. Like people don't have to worry as much about who they have to get. I think I think when we got Dave in, that's been the biggest push for us now is that Dave creatively now, at least creatively yeah, yeah. we have a little bit more uh, freedom with what we can do with our music now that we've got someone that can do the clean vocals that we want yep. to put in there now. So expect some cleans on the new album. <laughs> yeah, freedom. Yeah, scope as well like we can touch on some different like some real melodic choruses or that sort of thing yeah, yeah some memorable lyrics that people can sort of sing along to because everyone likes a good sing along every now and then yeah but again like we're not letting that take over our sound we're not trying to yeah. redefine our sound necessarily we're just sort of evolving the sound yeah adding um, an extra element but yeah, yeah i mean we um you know pr- previously we had chris and uh chris is a phenomenal vocalist and still to this day one of our one of my favorite vocalists that i've seen live small shout out to chris there <laughs> <laughs> yeah no he, he was absolutely amazing on stage and watching him when he was first with Synonymous as well, when Synonymous first came to the scene. Yeah. You know, when I first joined Amorium, I was sort of like, oh my God, that guy's going to be my vocalist as well. Whoa. You know? <laughs> like, that was really good. And Chris brought a massive, you know, heavy element to the band. But um, that, you know, forced us to sort of focus on some really heavy music. There wasn't much scope for, you know, doing the the cleans it didn't really play with the band but now because our music tastes are so diverse with different styled bands and everything we can like now we can actually make some music that we love that sounds a bit like this band or a little bit like that band you know we can sort of tick some boxes on our respective bucket lists draw on our influences a bit more that's good more so than the modern styles we've got lots of lots of melodic death you know, or at least what is typically known as melodic death. Yeah. Opeth, soil work, in flames, dark tranquility, yeah, yeah, that stuff. Yeah, no, I, I like I like that feel, um, and also the idea of crowds getting into it. It just makes the whole gig get a different vibe and sort of influences mm. that party feel. Um, we like yeah. to get the crowd involved, man. There's nothing worse than seeing just a crowd of people standing there with a beer in their hand and just watching. I mean, I'm yeah. grateful to see that, but I want people to actually like, you know, be gritting their teeth and furrowing their brows yeah. and being like, "Yes, this is this is really good," you know? Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, know running it. around bashing into people, that sort of thing. Yeah. yeah. But I'm um, going back to your like influences and stuff. Who are your main influences that get, like bleed into the band? As a band, yeah, and the sound of the band, I yeah. think. Yeah, Gothenburg bands for sure. Yep. Soil work, Dark Tranquility, In Flames, In Flames, Wolfheart, all kind of Scandinavian stuff. Yeah, nice. That the band, that the music of the band tends to be most influenced. Yeah, you can definitely hear that. I like, think there's that. a difference between like Insomnium, us. Omnium Gatherum, oh, all yeah. that mm-hmm. kind of. I think yeah. I think European the main difference is we have death stuff. We sure. have the influences of what the band sounds like but individually collectively we all have different influences there yeah um so what what we get influenced by doesn't necessarily mean that we sound like this band or we sound like that band we don't really draw elements from it but we draw the idea and the ideology of that band yeah so for instance i'll end up you know i'll find a really cool drum part maybe in like a 70s rock song yeah. that I like go oh that's really cool it's got a really good feel to it and then Jared will have this really cool guitar like part Toto, more or less yeah something like Toto yeah. <laughs> you're, you're right heap man um, but yeah it's, it's can't escape the Toto <laughs> never, never escape it but you get that kind of stuff where it's not we're not necessarily always drawing from a heavy metal yeah. it has to be Scandinavian that's all we listen yeah, to yeah yeah that kind of thing. There's a lot of like, you know, with, with the lyrics and vocal patterns and stuff as well on the last album, there was a lot of influence coming from, uh, I guess, the Iron Maiden yep. background as well because that's where, uh, at the time, that's where we were getting the influence from yep. that kind of style there. Yeah, so yeah. you can hear that in the lyrics and the vocal phrasing and stuff, but when you listen to it, it doesn't sound anything like Iron yeah, Maiden, yeah. you know? Yeah. So No, it doesn't. <laughs> no, it, it doesn't. No I, know yeah, what, no, I know what you mean. Like, you got your influences, but, like, that's not what, like... It's that's another great thing about this band, too, is you learn something every day. I'm like, <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't know that. I love Iron when, Maiden. When I was doing the vocals and lyrics, and that's what we did. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, and also you um, may be influenced by something that you don't necessarily know you draw an influence from. Like oh, you totally. might, yeah. Totally. Like you, you could you could hear like a really cool album, and next time you just accidentally sort of influenced by that um, hmm. sort of feel. Funny you guys story. Do, mate, I get actually, inspired by yeah, elevator yeah, music. So a really funny story on that subject. Yeah, yeah. Uh, after the first EP we did, maybe two thousand and ten. 
Yep. Uh, we got a, re- a review done, and we were likened to the band Bolt Thrower. Yes. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and none of us had ever heard a note of Bolt Thrower no. at that point in time when we released it. And it was only last week we were listening to Bolt Thrower at work, and I went, oh, wow, that actually sounds like an early the memory the first EP. <laughs> yeah. I could just somehow managed to write, not the whole thing, but just certain parts. Like yeah, the first yeah, one was yeah. a fair bit more death metal than yeah, what we yeah. were now. But yeah, that was crazy, because we always just went, what? Well, that sounds good. Bolt Thrower, no. Yeah. Yeah. We, 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 we yeah, write a song and be like, oh, that's, <laughs> that's a really cool riff. That's a cool idea. Yeah. Last week, like, oh. Oh, it sounds like Bolt Thrower. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. Bolt Thrower copied us, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Aren't they an 80s band or something? I've been around, yeah, since the early 80s. Yeah, no, it's uh, that's that's a good example of that. And who knows, it's, it's funny, like, the amount of times you hear a band just in a playlist or something, and you'll be like, oh, that they sung that song, you know? Like, you, you'll actually be drawing influence from a band that you might not realise they might have covered a song or something um, differently, and and you can get influenced that way as well oh yeah heaps of influences yep yeah Dutch and I both really like power metal as well oh yeah but there's not a lot of power metal influence <coughs> new yeah. in the stuff that we're doing more new and the other thing is too the cross pollination between bands I mean obviously if you're recording for like deprivation at the same time as you're gigging with Amorium you can obviously get that same even if it doesn't influence the actual music just the vibe of being with the other band members can also help I guess yeah the yeah. um the constant i guess juggling between multiple bands and juggling multiple genres is it's a bit of a fun challenge because you you can play like you know for instance when i was in tortured you're playing extreme death metal and then the next minute you're playing a deprivation gig which is just really groove yeah yeah so you've got to go from like really fast to you know mid-tempo stuff and it that gives you a big kind of like uh, idea of oh that i like how that feels yeah yeah and i love how this feels and you can kind of cross those two things together if you can make it work but mm. you know the it, the main thing is is with our music is we want to make sure that whatever we do whenever whatever we write that it feels good that we can sit there and go yes that part there sounds excellent it's huge it has an epicness to it and it yep. suits what we're doing with that song at the time yeah, yeah like first and foremost like we write music that we want to listen to we write yeah, music, yeah. we write music and we write riffs drum parts that we love playing live because yeah, if you're not yeah. having fun on stage then it's it's boring you and we wouldn't play on stage stuff. not not for the fans as well you exactly so first and foremost is that but like second of course is you know our fans and yeah, for yeah. other people we love there's nothing better than having a, you know a crowd full of people just getting into the music and enjoying it as much as you do yeah yeah, yeah I love that element <laughs> yeah. insert three circle pits of dragon force <laughs> <laughs> it was mental yeah yeah, yeah we, which, which leads us to the next question I mean Obviously, you've had some big gigs over the over the time that you've been gigging. What's been your most memorable gig? Probably would be the Dragon Force support last year. Yeah, yeah. It's just the first international support that Second. we had. It was the, it was the first massive international support we had. the The month before that, we actually played with uh, Voyager from Perth, and they brought out the algorithm from France. Yeah, so right. we we played uh, with them as well, and that was Davo, our new vocalist at the time. His yeah. first two shows with us were both international supports. That's pretty cool. No pressure, man. No, he must <laughs> do a good job. <laughs> I'm anyway, sure he wasn't especially as a front good. man as well, jumping yeah. up on the vocals. Yeah, no, Chad is absolutely right. That Dragon Force show was absolutely like a taste of like what we would love to get out of the band and like recharge the batteries, drove that inspiration to just pick up. You know, like a lot of people will say, oh, you see these guys live and you just want to quit because you're just like, no, nah, they're too good. <laughs> I'll never be that good. We sort of all collectively had the opposite to that. We were sort of just like so buzzed yeah, yeah. from being able to play to a sold out crowd. and uh, Adrenaline going mad. Oh, yeah, yeah, dude. It was next level. I cannot tell you how like shaky you were, we all were. On, <laughs> so at least I was shaky on stage, but it lapped that up. It's good that you all had that same drive in unison. So it means that you guys have like a good dynamic and that you mesh really well. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Morium is not so much just a band. It's also a very much a family <laughs> Yeah. as well. It's not just, oh, we've got practice and gigs and stuff. And that's sort of all we see of each other. Yep. We're up in each other's grills all the time. Yeah, yeah. Jared's yeah. bought a new rig for the live stage and stuff. We were, I was over there yesterday afternoon yep. setting it all up with him and everything. Yeah. yeah. Barbecues all the time. 
I think I think that's a really big key thing for the Emorium dynamic is that we actually make an effort to spend time with each other outside of yep. the band itself. So rather than as Dan was just saying, you know, we're not it's not always just band practice gigs and that's when we only hang out. We normally have barbecues, catch ups. Yep. You know, if we're if Jared's Unfortunately, I have working, to work with this guy. I have to work with him. <laughs> you know, if if well, you know Jared's working out somewhere nearby my place, I'll go over and say hi and see how he's going. Yeah, that's it's, really it's nice that to kind see of thing. Well, so that's really nice to hear like that you guys actually like really good friends outside yeah. of the band as well because that yeah. really helps your band shape and 100%, mold into like hundred percent the great guys that you are mm-hmm. yeah without the great music that you well, do i've known I, I knew singer dave like i've known him for a good uh five to eight years yeah through deprivation um one of the first things he said to me when i first met him was oh you play drums in templestow oh yeah 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 you know um, and that, that, that kind of stuff happens and organically and naturally. Yeah. And, you know, with Jared, you can hang out with Jared and, you know, talk to him about things that just relate between Jared and I or Jared yeah. and Dan. And everyone has their own little hangouts that they can do between each band member. It's not like this awkward, yeah. uh, I really know the guitarist really well, but... I don't know the vocalist and uh, it's really awkward when we hang out. No, it's none of that. Everyone's yeah, good, good mates. Everyone can hang out together and stuff. Yeah, so that's what you really want to hear. Like, yeah. It's such a tight network that you guys have got going as well. Like you said, you, you get to know people through other bands as well. So yeah, man. You, yeah you've got a really, really good um, group. I think we all feed off each other's enthusiasm as well. Like, you know, the Dep guys are like a renowned party band. Like I've yeah, never yeah. been to it. There's never a boring Dep show. Yeah. And I'm still surprised when I play on stage with those guys. Like yeah. I'm very very much a new member to that band still and they've been around forever um but the family dynamic rolls over to that band as well i mean our uh, the vocalist for deprivation ben works with jared at the moment as well so there's like that sort of cross family thing uh the claret ash guys i used to live with james back in the day that was and you know we used when we were both recording our respective first albums for each band yep. um and uh yeah, Nico, Nico, and I do things outside. Were you of... Living with Nick as well for a little while. No, I was, was living with James, Nick. Not just James, was that it? was yeah, my yeah. brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, um, I remember. But I suppose that's Canberra, though, right? Oh man, I think it's about 2014, maybe. I bought a bass guitar off Nick, and I went around, and I'm like, "Whoa, there's like several other band members that I recognise yeah. in this house as <laughs> Pretty well." Pretty much. Man. It was. Like, I think the Namazai guys lived there for a while. Kyle. Kyle, that's right. Kyle yeah. lived there. I mean, Kyle was the first one in that house, yep. and he had. Simo, the bass player at yep. the time, and Nick Tataris, who I think is still their drummer. Um, and then a couple of other um, mates and Nick's moved in and there's, there's just been this like wash of people through that place. <laughs> yeah, it's been good. Yeah, it's um, it's like one of those things where the real estate has like a set list instead of a band list of, like, <laughs> of, of tenants. Yeah. <laughs> they just sign with the band name. Yeah, that's what funny. What band are you in? I'm in this band. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Um, no, it's it's cool. It's, I think the whole Canberra community is like that with a sort of tight knit group, and that's why it's so cool to have Canberra metalheads kicking off with you guys and other bands as well, because we get to meet each other through through each band that we're in, and, and it's <laughs> or at the tight. basement after a few drinks. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, Stop, mate, you can pretty much go to the basement at any time, and yeah, there'll be yeah. somebody there that you will know. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, exactly. If not, Trent will be there. Yeah, <laughs> and he'll know someone that you might know. <laughs> Yeah, um, talk to this guy. So that's your most memorable gig you had. Um, was there any others that, like aside from the yeah? Um, I reckon Dragon the Force? second time we went to the South Coast. Yeah, yeah. At Maria, that was a great gig. It was who else played? Rana Terra, Synonymous, and Terravorus. Yeah, Terravorus, man. Those Rana guys are well. ripper. Yeah, that was great. The yeah, guys that... at the front shaking the yeah. barrier. Shit. Yeah, Terravorus got a good little crowd. After man. the show and bought heaps of merch and yeah, yeah. stuff signed. They really supported. It was just a great vibe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great time down there. Yeah, yeah I hope I hope that that venue keep bringing those yeah, shows yeah, down yeah. there because they do bass front as well. My <laughs> mate who runs. Uh, raw talent puts on bass front down yeah, there and yeah. that place packs out yeah it does and it's so good I just hope we can get to that level for a show like that down there because it's sort of a halfway house really for yeah. everyone on the south coast you know exactly yeah that, that venue gets lit up and the other thing is too the it's fairly expandable you've got like the whole outdoor area and things as well so it's good to have that extra sort of option available and not that far from camera exactly I was about to say it's not far away either so no, you can sort not. of shoot down there play the show and come home if you absolutely need to. if you need to yeah or like it's perfect if you've got like something uh friday saturday gigs or something you can just do it make a weekend of 
but it, it's yeah. a, it'd be pretty tiresome, but you get through it. Further on to what Jared was saying before about like some of our favourite gigs that we've done, yep. um, we've played a couple of shows with the Orpheus Amiga guys from Melbourne as well. Yeah, yeah. Who we're great mates with and looking forward to working with again in the future. Um, but those guys have had us up and, you know, put a, gave us an olive branch essentially. We were very much a, a new band or like, you know, evolving band at yeah, the time. Yeah. And they gave us that uh, opportunity to play a couple of shows with them on their Part of Vita Mortem album tour cycle. We went to Sydney with them and those guys, they really bring crowds and gave us all of the, you know, all of the praise and, you know, helped us out a lot with those shows. So shout out to those guys. Shout out to them. Thanks, Chris. <laughs> all the Chris's. <laughs> so where do you um, see Amorim as a band going? What do you want from this? Well, I think we'd want to focus on, like, immediately yeah. the next album. Um, get that out. Yep. Uh, Live-wise, uh, I think our focus is a little bit more interstate. Uh, while still playing Canberra, we've done a lot of Canberra shows yeah. recently. And I think probably Melbourne is our primary focus the scene down there is just fantastic yeah melbourne's got a pretty all great sorts of metal but yeah particularly our kind of melodic death stuff there's some great bands down there and i think that's not only melbourne but is where our focus is. yeah conquer one city at a time i think there's a, there a little bit more than i think have. there's a lot of Boston. ground to be covered down there and a lot of new fans to be made down there i oh, think yeah, we'd make it's such a big city so like i think there's, a lot of there's so much talent coming out of melbourne that we just absolutely love and would love to see you come to canberra more but at the same time you know we were really want to branch out down there as well because we just want to have some fun play some music in some new venues and make some new friends and um as far as the uh the shows go jared's right we've played a, a quite a few shows in canberra and we don't want to overstay our welcome here either because we yeah. don't want to keep playing to the same crowd all the time we want to yeah, keep yeah. those keep a bit of distance between shows so that each time we do play each show is a bit special and yeah. those guys have had that break from us and like all right i'm ready to come and see more of them again yeah, get yeah. my fill um as well, it's about us exercising a bit of patience as well because we're always keen to play, but we we got to make sure that we're playing shows that you know we really want to be on, you know, and they're yeah, really yeah. going to help us move forward. So I suppose from the sort of <clears throat> if you want to call it the business side of the band, yep. we're sort of focusing on like trying to you know pick the right shows and not just play everyone we get because we don't want to like saturate our shows in the scene too much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To where we sort of become just like a an overseen band that yeah, sort of yeah. thing. No, I totally understand where you're coming yeah. from. Yeah. You don't want to see us every weekend, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't want to see us every weekend. <laughs> I don't even want to see you every weekend. <laughs> dot, dot, dot. <laughs> you see you every week at work, I guess. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so I think yeah. So yeah, and I mean, the the further to the, the the direction of the band, we definitely want to focus more on interstate shows because we've played the basement heaps, and we want to play some new stages. Um, as far as writing's concerned, like we are currently in the sort of pre-production stage, we're finalising some of the tunes that we've been writing, uh, getting all those bits and pieces organised. You now we're in talks with some studios to do the production and the editing, mixing mastering all that sort of thing yep. and a um, couple other big things on the cards as well we can't actually sort of disclose those at the moment because nothing's yeah. really confirmed but this we've got some big plans in the pipeline that we're really looking forward to announcing awesome. but uh, we have to play the waiting game on that one unfortunately yeah so <laughs> things we... confirmed but can't speak <laughs> <laughs> yeah no once it's all confirmed um, we we'll definitely like to uh, have you guys on the show again yeah, yeah. I, th I think with the new album we're going to have like a lot of different uh, sounds coming through different influences and stuff especially Especially with Dave coming on, um, we've grown a lot since our 2015 release of Universum. Um, played with a whole bunch of really awesome bands, done a whole bunch of shows. So the next album is going to be pretty big in comparison. It's going to yep. be a, a lot more of a bigger sound. Um, having Dave, yeah, more production. Having Dave come in um, will open up a, a new realm of vocal, uh, you know, capabilities that we can use and ideas that we've got there. Um, and then, yeah, we'll be working with a few really close people on the album um, from other bands that we're good mates with, and they're going to uh, help with a few little bits and pieces here and there that we can't really disclose just yet. Keep everybody, um, mm. keep everybody asking for more, Te ah, teasing the fans a little bit. That's what that, you have to do, right? That's good. Keep the interest there. So, <laughs> no, uh, so keep your ears to the ground for some. Uh, Big news from Memoriam. So aside from um, some big news from Memoriam with, you know, potential prospects with big, bigger, newer albums and um, more information, uh, what sort of upcoming gigs you guys got? July is a busy time for us. Uh, we'll have the uh, Ashes to Dust uh, hosting Vanishing Point for the first time in Canberra in many, many years. And uh, we're also ta tail tailing with them to 
Sydney as well uh, with two back to back two back to back shows or two shows back to back. And um, so in Canberra on 6th of July, which happens to be my birthday, hell yeah, gigs on birthdays. Wicked. Um, we've got Vanishing Point, uh, obviously, Emorium. We've got the guys from The Ascended, and we also have Battle Bard coming down as well to join us for an awesome night, which is sure to be fun. And we're then hitting the road to Sydney with the Vanishing Point guys to play Metal Storm up in Sydney as well, which is a massive, massive show. There's, I think, something like 13 bands on that. Yeah, and well, some, crazy, some really yeah. big names. I like. I could run off a few, but I think I'll just let the event speak for itself. You can find you it can, on our if Facebook page. You could page. plug that and just put it in the link and, you know, everyone go look at that. That'd be nice. Yeah, for sure. So ch- check out the social media for um, all those events Yeah, as man, well. it's, it's on our Facebook page. The events are there, and we've got a couple more to be confirmed, but yep. they're still in progress yet, and then until they get announced, we sort of are under embargo not to say anything. <laughs> So, yeah, you can understand again, that. patience sucks because we just want to tell people because we're <laughs> yeah. excited, but we've got to wait, got to do the professional thing. <laughs> no, it's good. Well, it's good to hear that you guys have so many cool prospects coming up to back up all the good work you've already done. And uh, I know that everybody out there loves listening to some Memoriam and also uh, some of the influences that you guys have had on um, on the Canberra metal scene in general. So, I Absolutely. mean, you guys uh, represent some of the longest, longest uh, serving bands in the scene. And it's always good to have you on the show and hear about some um, upcoming things. Good so, being here. Yeah, thanks for coming yeah, thanks in. Thanks, for having thanks so much for having us, guys. Awesome. Surely yeah. won't be the last time. No, yeah, definitely won't be. No, for sure, especially um, especially with potential prospects coming up. We're always happy to spin some new tracks on the show. So, um, yeah, thanks for coming in. We'll have to have you on the show again. Cheers, Canberra guys. Metal Cheers, guys. Thanks, guys. Keep it metal. Yucca, yucca, bam! <laughs>